percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? And, and you know, they, they, they express how, hey, I have half of my, my retirement savings in a combination of XRP, Dogecoin, and God knows whatever coin. So it's been really concerning for me, and I think... That Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, Tofar Script, let's get right into today's video. There's a lot of uncertainty in the air after the comments that were made by David Rudder. David Rudder is the CEO of R3 and has been for 11 years. That was him in the intro talking about Dogecoin and XRP and how people express to him that they have these holdings in their retirement funds. Well, in today's video, we are going to go over some hardcore facts. This is just a distraction. You got to see what's happening behind the scenes and what these companies are forming behind the scenes. Okay, let's start back in 2015. I suggest you guys watch yesterday's video. It will go hand in hand with today's video. It worked out perfectly. Ripple releases Interledger to connect banks and blockchains. October 8th, 2015. Look at the dates. Very, very important. And then just a month later, just a month later after Ripple released Interledger to connect banks and blockchains, we had Meet the 25 Banks working with Distributed Ledger Startup R3. What are the odds? Ripple provides the technology, gets it going, and then the consortium of R3, which Ripple XRP will be leveraged indirectly. The list of partners includes banking giants such as Goldman Sachs and Santander, both of which have already dipped their toe in the world of crypto through investments in Circle and Ripple, respectively. Okay very well right out there in front of your face and here we have bank of america involved bny mellon involved we have Citibank involved and we have hsbc involved which all have indirect correlations with ripple and xrp and then in 2016 when they had everything ready us startup r3 and banks test ripple's cross-border payments technology you see do you see that time frame so we had Interledger to connect the banks together on the 2015 of October. A month late, later, R3 announces uh, the banks they're working with alongside with Ripple. And then in 2016, they actually start doing the tests. And now let's get into the video where I will be pausing and explaining what he is talking about. Um, but from my perspective, Financial markets fundamentally work. They're imperfect in many, many ways. Uh, and I looked at this technology as a way to improve uh, upon that. And we're beginning to see some real, you know, production-based um, systems. The SDX issues digital bonds that are truly digitally native. And you can settle them now with wholesale uh, CBDC from the Swiss National Bank. Yep. All right, so he's talking about the SDX exchange for a moment. Let's talk about that. So this is a notice of basic agreement on establishment of a joint venture with six digital exchange in Switzerland. Okay, this is SBI and SDX coming together for Singapore-based institutional investors. This is where things get pretty, pretty hectic. Okay, listen to this. SDX is a member of the six group which operates the Swiss Stock Exchange, one of the world's leading exchanges and provides trading and settlement agency services for digital assets in Europe centered on Switzerland. And then, remember this, just a couple days ago, BBVA is partnering with Matico to strengthen its crypto asset services in Switzerland. And guess what? Who's big in Switzerland? Ripple just bought a Swiss company. That was Matico. Ripple has acquired Matico, a Swiss crypto custody services firm. And then in 2017, BVA completed their first real-time international money transfer between Europe and Mexico with Ripple. Do you see how these are all just connected? This is, this is a couple days ago. 
this is what I mean. They're all working together. All these companies are working together. It could be directly or it could be indirectly. And then we even had Zodiac Custody integrates on Matico Network, which is also backed by shareholders that a, a big giant portion is Standard Chartered Bank, SBI Holdings. Standard Chartered is an investor in Ripple. SBI, we don't even need to get into SBI and Ripple and all the correlations that they have. We're just scratching the surface. Let's continue. You have creative firms like HQLAX, which tokenize underlying collateral for collateral swaps and balance sheet management. Uh, the Italian banking system runs on our product, Corda. Oh, okay. You want to talk about Italian Banking Association completes first test of blockchain-based interbank system, October 2nd of 2018. And guess what? It was on Corda DLT platform developed by blockchain consortium R3. And in that same year, couple months, couple months after, okay, so this was in October, in December, R3 made it public that their universal settler application is to facilitate XRP as the first settlement mechanism. While the settler will be open to all forms of crypto and traditional assets, this demonstration with XRP is the next logical step in showing how widespread acceptance and use of digital assets to transfer value and make payments can be achieved. And in the back of your mind, also think about it from this perspective. Ripple is regulated. XRP has clarity. None of the other assets have clarity. Bitcoin and XRP are the only assets that have clarity. And look where we are positioned today with all the partnerships. The amount of trust that Ripple has built the past 10 years, the network of trust is what I call it, is going to pay out incredibly well. And here we have the Corda Settler still up on the R3 website where they pretty much put the whole proof of concept of how the XRP network will be used with Corda in terms of settlement and exchange rates. I'll leave the link in the description down below so you guys could check it out yourself. And let's continue on with what he says here. Um, and also, you know, I can't tell you how many painters at my house or valets or folks that have, uh, uh, come into contact and they maybe they Google you and they think blockchain is crypto uh, and actually uh, Corda is a distributed ledger technology. We don't use blocks. It's inefficient for regulated finance. So we're not going to actually have blockchains underpinning our financial infrastructure. Um, and, and, you know, they, they, they express how, hey, I have half of my my retirement savings in a combination of XRP, Dogecoin and God knows whatever coin. So it's been really concerning for me, and I think that the regulators uh, have been a bit slow uh, to address it. Now, with any new technology innovation like the internet, there's amazing uh, potential for us to reinvent money, and we're doing a lot of work there with Project Jura and um, Project Dunbar, and you met, we mentioned a project out of Singapore a little bit earlier. Um, and then he brings up projects like Project Dunbar, which we're gonna get into in a second, but. The whole comment that he made about XRP and Dogecoin, I don't really think there's a really true meaning behind it. I think he just used those digital assets. I think there shouldn't be any kind of fear. Um, I just showed you hardcore evidence of what's going on behind the scenes and how Ripple and R3 in the future, they will be working together 100%. Everybody thinks they're not, but folks, NDAs, look them up non-disclosure agreements are a real thing in finance. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, there's a lot of stuff out there that's happening. Those round tables that are occurring that we are not there. The best we could do is try to put the puzzles together like we did here with SBI, SDX, which he referred to, and BBVA partnering with Matico, which is owned by Ripple, and BBA doing their first real-time international transfer with Ripple. Why would they go to Matico? Because they know Ripple owns Matico because on all in one suite, okay, we had SBI. Okay, do you guys see where I'm going here? 
I really do appreciate every single one of you guys that just heard me ramble on about that. Um, so let's get into Project Dunbar. Listen to this part. However, the platform would be only one part of the end-to-end -end payment flow. It will likely also need to connect with central bank systems for the pledging of assets back in the issuance of CBDCs and with commercial bank systems for customer transactions. They're talking about this R3 proof of concept that they have going. The platform would be only one part of the end-to-end -end payment flow, okay? They don't have this thing all fully figured out. Further development and testing of technical connectivity and integration with external systems will be important and could be explored together with the business perspective and supporting other commercial use cases and applications. Did you hear that? Further development and testing of technical connectivity and integration with external systems will be important and could be explored, which is, I don't even know why they say could be explored, it will be explored. And to put the icing on the cake, standards and interoperability, a multi-CBDC platform will need to connect with other external systems. Furthermore, to enable global payments across all jurisdictions and currencies, a regional multi-CBDC platform will need to connect with other national or regional multi-CBDC platforms. David, just please help me out here. I have the technology to allow every financial institution on the planet to settle with every other financial institution in a compatible jurisdiction in any asset in seconds for less than a penny. Just, just think about this. Music to my ears. I'll read that part again. To enable global payments across all jurisdictions and currencies. Interoperability or the ability for these systems to communicate with each other easily and seamlessly will be crucial for global connectivity. Standards or a common language and set of expectations will be key to enabling in the interoperability between the systems. What more do you need? The writing's on the wall, just get into these documents, start digging, look what's going on. They're talking about the R3 platform here with also a downside to it. There needs to be more added on to this technology for them to all flow together. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with another video. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. Uh, I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be, understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.